What did you make of the news, first of all? I, there does seem to be some ambiguity in terms of what the word transaction means, but it does fit a pattern of China cracking down. Thanks for having me. I mean, the grayscale view on these issues that we've looked at for the past eight years is really seeing no shortage of both prohibitive and accommodative stances from state actors like China looking at digital currencies like Bitcoin. I think time and again, we've seen these challenges come up. In some instances, it's been about trading uh, mm -hmm. and the digital currency exchanges in places like China. In other times, it's been things like mining uh, and the activities that go into controlling the Bitcoin network. And each time we've seen this challenge come up or a more prohibitive stance come up, we've seen truly the resiliency of the community around digital assets. And that exchange volume has moved to other geographies and that mining concentration has also moved into other geographies and has actually had an opportunity to even move to some more sustainable mining methodologies. Sure, so but, no, no, but Michael, no, no, uh, no surprise here. But Michael, um, as of April, and I realize that was April, um, China had about 46% share of the global hash rate. And that's basically the computer power and used in mining and processing. If all of that was shut down and you couldn't trade and you couldn't buy stuff with it, I mean, it's really hard to, to see that contained. How does that not put a big dark cloud on the overall crypto space for a while? It's it really, again, about resiliency. That has all moved elsewhere. We've seen now some of the largest mining pools and, again, hash rate um, move into places like North America. And as the conversation has heated up around challenging the Bitcoin mining industry to move towards renewable energy sources, that has become a top priority for many of those mining operations. But I guess the wider point here is that while you can shift operations out of China, you are looking at one of the world's biggest economies that is basically saying no. That at some point must reduce the number of available participants in this Bitcoin process, in the crypto process, significantly. And I'm wondering at what point that starts to have a meaningful impact on prices. What the Chinese authorities are saying, and I don't understand what transaction means, but it's basically saying anybody outside China is not allowed to transact with anybody inside China. So basically, foreign exchanges, etc., cannot deal with China anymore. If that is the case, we're basically walling off a huge part of the available universe. I think that this is no different than the way that we've seen the Chinese take certain stances on internet accessibility and news. And typically, when those types of policies are implemented, you see that the Chinese nationals, that their behavior really goes into using other methods to do, um, you know, to have the ability to gain exposure to those, those avenues that have been prohibited. Now, in the case of Bitcoin and the digital currency ecosystem, um, this is a worldwide adoption that we're really seeing. And so the adoption rates in just in China, while that certainly was a meaningful part of the ecosystem at one point, now that has really moved around the world. You're seeing mm -hmm. massive adoption in sub-Saharan Africa, all over Southeast Asia, um, North America. It's not just the developed world, but actually the developing world is becoming a really important component of the ecosystem at large. Okay, so then based on that, um, the sentiment's still pretty gloomy today. You had, say, Coinbase Global, the debut junk bond sale fell to some fresh lows. Like, what do you buy on a day like today? Well, I would say that typically on days when the headlines put pressure on crypto prices, our investors are using those opportunities to buy those pullbacks. If their conviction in the asset class hasn't changed, but they can suddenly buy the same asset, for five, maybe 10% cheaper than they could even 24 hours ago, then that's something a lot of investors are doing to put more money to work. And I think that especially because the ecosystem has evolved so much, we're now seeing investors move beyond assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum and looking at some of these other subsets of digital currency ecosystems that may resonate with them. And that could be DeFi, it could be privacy, it could be gaming, um, the list goes on and on, but certainly a trend towards diversification and looking at these pullbacks opportunistically.